Whew. Yes, sir. It's your boy, Reg Dollar. We really here. This is episode one of the Goaded My NBA series. This is not your typical My NBA series, little rebuilding Johns, oh, this little trade, this, that. We go do uh, this challenge, this, that. Nah, this is different. This is special. This is generational. This is the one, ladies and gentlemen. The Golden My NBA series. As you can tell, we are in the offseason and basically at the end of the offseason. What we did was, you know, I think I uploaded a scenario. You can probably find it if you type in my name in the scenarios. What I did was I sent, well, I made it so like the record was to a certain date. What was it, like January 11th? So I went through every, and I did like the force win for every individual game. And then I got to like January 11th. And then what I did was I traded, I sent it to the trade deadline. Ended up making some uh, trades that I'm going to show you guys. So we're going to go through the trade deadline. And then we're going to send to the end of the season. Take a look at the awards and the standings. And then go through the playoffs. And then I'm going to show you guys basically the all-season recap of the draft lottery. Uh, the NBA draft. Uh, the moves in free agency. And that's yeah, that for that for the most part, that's probably gonna be the video. So that's gonna be the year one recap. And that's just the beginning. Without further ado, let's get right to it. Oh wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we get right to it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, because we're really about to turn this series up. Alright, now let's get to it. You feel me? The first trade that went down at the deadline was PJ Washington for Chris Doite. And Indiana has been looking for a four since they lost a bonus, so I thought this was a perfect fit. And the Charlotte Hornets uh, have been talking about not extending P.J. Washington, so why not go and get a guy who's still on a rookie contract and Chris Dorte, although he's older, he could still contribute on the wing. Next, the Lakers finally do something. They end up acquiring Bojan Bogdanovic, Nerlens Noel, Cam Reddish, and Derrick Rose. Four rotation pieces while giving a Westbrook to the Detroit Pistons, an unprotected first-round pick, uh, Kendrick Nunn, and Patrick Beverly to the New York Knicks, and two second-round picks to the Knicks. The Lakers finally make a move. Can this be the move that helps them propel them to championship contender? I'm not 100% sure yet, but the rotation pieces that they got kind of, kind of make up from the trade a couple years ago. Adding Bogdanovich, adding a young guy like Cam Reddish to see what he could turn into. Adding another guard in D. Rose, and then a rim protector in Nerlens Noel off the bench to pair up with Anthony Davis. Let's see what this could do for the Los Angeles Lakers. The Pelicans become aggressive, and they end up acquiring Yaka Pertl for Jonas Valanciunas and a, first, a future first-round pick. And the biggest thing in the Pelicans, they're lacking a rim protector. So hopefully Yaka Pertl could help with that. And he's also up for extension. So we'll see how that goes for the New Orleans Pelicans. All right, this is probably, probably my, one of my favorite trades so far. John Collins is finally off the trade block, going to the Wizards. Justin Holiday, nope, he's just a throwing in his trade. And they get a protective first-round pick. This is a solid trade for the Wizards, especially given the fact that Kuzma is not going to re-sign with this team. And you get a fire on John Collins. He was putting up around like 20 and 10 like a couple years ago. Has production. Then on the other side, Kyle Kuzma fits this Hawks team perfectly. And we have a forward that could... Kyle Kuzma could stretch the forward better than John Collins, and I think he could play well off others too. Even though the Collins and Trey Young lob threat was good, I think this could be even better because Kuzma is a better defender too and more versatile. This is just a little trade. You know, it's too crazy. Alec Burks will hoop though, I'm not going to lie. So this is a solid pickup for the Memphis Grizzlies. Got adding another vet to the roster. Does anybody really care about this trade? Nah? All right, we can move on. I know the Suns were expecting more for, for getting something with Jay, Jay Crowder, but Kyle Anderson is something better than nothing. And we'll see how Jay Crowder expands out coming off the bench from Minnesota. No need from Obama in Orlando anymore. Kind of surprised he re-signed with the team. But this is a good flyer for the Los Angeles Clippers, adding another big man behind Zubak. Even though they had to get with Terrence Mann, I like this trade for both sides. This just seems like I was bored trade. And I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you right. Because nobody, we don't care. We don't care. I don't know how much I love this trade for the Clippers. I know Luke Kennard is on a kind of bigger salary than people kind of expect. But I like this trade for the Toronto Raptors. They need more shooting. So they acquired that in Luke Kennard, who led the league in three per percentage last year. And then the Clippers get another wing in Otto Porter. Let's see how that turns out. 
in the last trade of the deadline, the Washington Wizards end up becoming the most talked about team on this night. After before the deadline, they trade for Fred Van Fleet. What is this Wizards team doing? They just love being mediocre. This new starting five is Fred Van Fleet, Bradley Beal, probably either Denny or Corey Kispert, and then John Collins and Chris Dabbs Porzingis. Not gonna lie. That's a mid-team. They're not making it past the first round. They have no future. They just traded Johnny Davis, who they picked in the top 10 or 11, whatever spot he went, and he's been horrific. I don't know what this team is doing, but at least they didn't give up no draft picks. But they're the 12th spot. Let's see if they can make a playoff run. Taking a look at the standings, there's only three teams in the Western Conference that won 50 games, and Denver and Grizzlies were tied, but Denver ended up being the number one seed. And then from there, the playing spot is looking like the Los Angeles Lakers, the Golden State Warriors, the Phoenix Suns at 9, the Minnesota Timberwolves at 10, and the Sacramento Kings just missing out on the playing spot. And the Jazz ended up tailing out towards the end of the season. And then looking at the East Conference, the Boston Celtics won 65 games, the best team by far, the Nets at, at the second spot. The Bucks at three, and the East is looking stacked. East is looking stacked, and the playing teams are looking like we got the Chicago Bulls, the Hawks, the Pacers, and the Heat. And look at them. The Washington Wizards did all that just to not make the play-in again. It's a sorry franchise. Sorry franchise, but let's take a look at the coach of the year. Uh, Yeah, let's move on. We got to remove him. Shout out that boy Lari from winning the most improved player of the year, averaging 22 and a half points, eight rebounds, multiple career highs. Shout out to him for having a phenomenal season and turning up and changing the narrative around him. Sixth man of the year goes to Bogey, coming off the bench, lighting it up, averaging 16 and shooting a very efficient from the field. Shout out to him. And then next award, Rookie of the Year, Paulo Bencaro. You could have just written that in stone after he got drafted. As long as he was going to stay healthy, he was the most NBA-ready player by far. He's him. You know, brotherhood, you feel me? Paulo's going to be a special player. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Anthony Davis for anchoring the Lakers defense. I think they had a top 10 defense despite being only like a 500 team. That has to be like the worst team. The worst Worst record for a player to win defensive player of the year. And MVP. You guys know if you guys play 2K who wins MVP every single year. Luka Doncic putting up godly numbers to no one's surprise. But let's take a look at the playoff bracket after the playing games. In a battle for the seventh spot in the Western Conference, the Golden State ended up being the Lakers. And then in a 9-10, and 9-10 and 10 game, the Suns ended up being the Minnesota Timberwolves. And for the eighth spot, the Lakers ended up being the Phoenix Suns and getting the revenge that they've been looking for since 2021. And then on the, on the Eastern Conference, the battle for the seventh and eighth spot, uh, the Atlanta Hawks ended up being the Chicago Bulls in the first game. And then in the 9-10 and 10 game, you had the Miami Heat being the Indiana Pacers. And the Chicago Bulls end up folding, losing to Miami Heat for the eighth spot. And now it's time to take a look at what happened in the playoffs. Let's go and see the Eastern Conference and Western Conference MVPs. Stephen Curry, you're going back to back when the Western Conference Finals MVP. Is it a Magic Johnson Award? I think so. Something like that. Average 30 points. They're the seventh seed. Draymond Green was not lying. They don't care who they face. They're on their way to another NBA Finals. Then on the other side, they're going up against the Greek freak Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, Eastern Conference Finals MVP after winning his six games against the Philadelphia 76ers. And it's time to take a look at your NBA champions of 2023. And that goes to the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis winning his second championship and second Finals MVP. And they took it to seven games. And in that game seven, let's take a look at the stats. Curry had 37 points, had six turnovers, though. But he was bugging. 12 of 18 from the field. Jordan Poole at 28. 18 for Andrew Wiggins. And let's look down at the list. Klay Thompson, 3 and 9 from the field. Draymond Green, 10, point, 10 rebounds and 14 assists. Only two points, but only took two shots. But James Wiseman, 1 of 8 from the field. 
over three from the three point line. What's the over unders of him never playing a game in Golden State ever again after this performance, only losing by two points? And on the other side, Middleton was eight of twenty, leading the Bucks in scoring. Giannis only has seventeen points, his worst game of the series. But the role players kind of stepped up. Everybody kind of scored for the role players off the bench. Ingles only had four points, but the rest had seven or more. And you could attribute that to them having gained seven on their home court. You know how the role players step up on the home court. And if I would have showed you just Giannis and Curry stats, you would have thought that the that the Warriors won in his game seven. But that was not the case. But let's take a look at the lottery because it's time to move into the offseason. Trav lottery and one of these 14 teams have a chance of winning the sweepstakes of Victor Wembenyama. We've been hearing about Wembenyama this whole time, one of the most generational prospects of all time, and we finally about to know where he's going to go. And the number one pick goes to the San Antonio Spurs, followed by the Toronto Raptors jumping up all the way to number two, and the Orlando Magic getting the third pick. Wow. This is crazy. I'm not even going to lie. San Antonio, it, how fitting it is. San Antonio, uh, Victor Wembanyama played for Tony Parker. You know San Antonio always be having the international players. And they land Victor Wembanyama. We know that's already locked in. Number two, Scoot Henderson potentially going to the Toronto Raptors. Nobody's really thought of that at all, but that's kind of nuts that they're able to, that they're in this position to get Scoot. And then at three, Orlando sits here. The Washington Wizards, after I was dumping on them, ended up jumping into the top five. And this is the first time they've been this high and I don't even know how long. Well, probably Bradley Beal's selection, Otto Porter, probably around there, around like 30, 2013. So it's been like 10 years since they got like a top 10 pick. Yeah, so the Wizards are definitely winners in the draft, I must say. And then obviously San Antonio, the Raptors, and the Magic also having two lottery picks and a top three pick uh, to go alongside that. And the biggest losers for me is the Rockets. After projecting again a number one pick, falling out of the top four, I know it definitely hurts. And then the Charlotte Hornets, because they needed another superstar potential guy. But hey, that's tough. That's tough. Very tough. But let's move on to the NBA draft and let's see what happens. All right, Victor Wembanyama, obviously the number one draft, number one draft pick. Scoot Henderson going two to the Toronto Raptors. I love the young core. The potential duo between Scoot Henderson and Scotty Barnes. Mm, mm, mm. I kind of I like the, I like the sounds of that. At number three, Ahmed Thompson going to the Orlando Magic. Number four, Brandon Miller to the Washington Wizards. I think this could probably turn out one of the best draft draft selections they had in years. In years. At number five, Asar Thompson going to the Rockets. Um, six. Cam Whitmore is going to be the Miles Bridges replacement. We'll see how that turns out. I like Cam Whitmore's game. At number seven, Gigi Jackson. Uh, when I downloaded this class, I didn't look at the ages. He's supposed to be the youngest player in this class, but I'm probably I'm going to have to end up changing that. Jairus Walker at eight to OKC. Anthony Black at nine. Maxwell Lewis to the Pacers. I like these spots. Keontae George to the Sacramento Kings. Kaysan Wallace to the Suns could be... The replacement for Devin, uh, not Devin Booker, uh, for Chris Paul when he ends up retiring soon. Uh, Jet Howard, I love this spot for for Minnesota. Him going to Minnesota. Then Nick Smith at the end of the lottery at number 14. And keep an eye. We're going to talk about Nick Smith in a second because he, does, he doesn't stay on this team for long, as you could probably see from his jersey, what team he's probably on. Uh, Derek ended up going outside the lottery. Shout out Jersey, feel me? Uh, going to OKC, Khalil Ware, Jalen Hood, Shafino, Taylor Hendricks. I like this spot for the Hawks. Um, Ryan Rupert, I like this. I like this pick for the Bulls. Back-to-back um, -back picks, Grady Dick and Kobe Jones. Two two solid role guys you can see playing for the Knicks. Uh, Chris Murray, hopefully he could be like his brother and be an instant contributor right away. Bob Miller, upside swing for the Pacers. Uh, Trayvon Brazil ended up tearing his ACL early on in the season, but was playing really well. Uh, Bryce Sensaba ends up going 26. In real life, I think he's probably going to end up being like a top 20 pick. Marcus Sasser at 27. Derek Lively with the upside swing. Um, potentially end up playing behind Nick Claxton. They kind of got like, well, Lively is bigger than Nick Claxton, but kind of a little bit similar frames. 
Filipowski ends up, his teammate goes to the Celtics. He looked like he will play for the Celtics. And then Jordan Hawkins, the last pick to the Rockets. Then anybody crazy in the second round end up slipping. Nah, I could see all these guys end up going first round, second round. All right. So that's cool with the draft. And let's take a look at free agency. We're about to take a look at the free agency and just basically all the transactions that went down. We're about to just go by the teams and just scroll, scroll through the stuff that was kind of important. Jay Crowder and Terrence Ross, I think that's good pickups for the Sixers. Harden end up re-signing with the team. Milwaukee Bucks, they end up trading for the sixth man of the year. Bogdanovich gave up a first round pick. Gave up Grayson Allen. Gave up, um, what's buddy name? Jordan Orr in that trade as well. <laughs> they signed Justin Holiday back and they'll trade him. They signed Eric Gordon too. So, okay. They made some moves. End up getting some scoring at the guard position that they really need. And the Chicago Bulls just made one of the most recent trades. They blew it up, blew it up. They blew it up. Got rid of everybody, basically. Other than Patrick Williams and they started five, everybody's gone. And also Caruso as well. Um, as you can see, uh, they re-signed they re Kobe White. They re-signed AO. They traded DeMar DeRozan and Vucevic in the offseason for DeAndre Ayton and Landry Shamit. Let's see how that goes for the Suns because they're basically going all in now. But the main reason why they kind of did this deal because it's it's a little bit weird with the Suns because of the fit. You got Devin Booker, Chris Paul, Vucevic, and now DeMar DeRozan. A lot of guys are kind of operating in the mid-range a little bit too as well, but... DeRozan, I think, is in a contract year, and I think Vucevic is in a contract year. Same thing with Chris Paul. So if it doesn't work out, it could be off the salary cap, and we'll see, and the Suns could go from there. So I kind of like that for them. And then the Bulls just go young and get DeAndre. It's former number one pick. Supposed to be a promising guy. You expect more for DeAndre because he shows flashes of being really good, but he just doesn't do it at a consistent level. And then the other trade that they made, I was talking about Nick Smith before. The Orlando Magic acquire Zach Levine for Nick Smith, Jalen Suggs, and Jonathan Isaac. Nick Smith was the last pick in the lottery. Jalen Suggs was a former top five pick, but he just had a little bit of injury problems. They had a log jam at the guard spot. And then also Jonathan Isaac. Brother hasn't played in like three years. He just came back in real life uh, just recently. He hasn't played in forever. So they acquire... Um, a star, an all-star shooting guard. Paula Bancaro is NBA ready and showing it. Franz Wagner has arguably been the second best player, well, the best player in this class to this point. So the Magic is starting to make moves. Looks like they want to make some little pushes and start to win now. And now that leaves Markel, is Markel Fultz, Zach Levine was an all-star. Franz Wagner is on the up-and-coming, going into his third year. Paulo. And uh, Wendell Carter at the five spot. You still got Bull Bull coming off the bench. I think Cole Anthony might still be there. But I like the direction that Orlando is going. Then also, Alex Caruso is going back to L.A., but it's not the Lakers. He got traded for Brandon Boston, Ken Birch, and two second-round picks as well. And then the most recent deal was a three-team trade where they gave up. They traded Lonzo Ball. They really didn't really acquire anything. They traded Alonzo Ball, end up getting uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., but Kevin Porter Jr. ends up going to the to the Hornets. So this more so, we could talk about that trade a little bit later on. <coughs> Cavaliers, all they did was um, they didn't really do anything. Dennis Schroeder, Biombo, Celtics didn't really do anything crazy. I had to get rid of uh, <laughs> Udoka. We had to get, we had to let him go. Um, I. Uh, Clippers, we basically talk about their moves. We signed John Wall. They signed Patrick Beverly. They got some old heads. It's Patrick, oh, this little two vets. Vet minimum, well, three vet minimum signed. There's really nothing crazy. Um, Grizzlies, they ain't doing nothing. The Hawks, re signed DeAndre Hunter, but that was already done in real life. They signed Shake Milton and they re signed Kyle Kuzma, and then they made this trade. And Naaman Millen got the hell out of there. We had to let him go. Oh, Phil Handy is their head coach. <laughs> yeah, Phil Handy is their head coach. I forgot that happened. Uh, Westbrook went to the Heat and then ended up re-signing there. And they picked up Jalen McDaniels. 
with the Hornets. They got rid of Gordon Hayward. So Tim Hardaway Jr. got traded to this team and ended up getting traded later on. Well, traded again. So Gordon Hayward is going to the Mavericks. Um, Ruby's on this team. I forgot. I don't remember how he got there. And they also hired a new coach, Jay Larry nigga. So you got LaMelo and Kevin Porter Jr. in the backcourt together. And then they also picked up Cam Whitmore. And they had Chris Dorte. So they're doing a little bit better with their young core. But they still ain't, they still ain't nothing crazy. They could be another lottery team, but they're starting to acquire a little bit more talent. Uh, Jordan Clarkson got traded for Bertans, Tyrese Hunter in a second round pick. And they also picked up Darius Baisley. Wait, what? <laughs> Ain't no way. Uh, Udoka is their head coach now. I could have swore they still had uh, Will Hardy. I got to make that change. <laughs> Brother just won't go away. That's crazy. Um, the Sacramento Kings, they picked up Jackson Hayes, Reggie Bullock. Nothing crazy. The Knicks had to make that. Um, gave RJ Barrett that deal. They traded for Valanchunas to be the backup for Mitchell Robinson. And then they also signed Lonnie Walker, who had a good season with the Lakers. So I like that one. And then the Lakers, they picked up Payne Pritchard. They got Stanley Johnson back. They re-signed Thomas Bryant. And they re-signed all the people that they traded for. But Nerlens Noel. He ended up going somewhere else. The Magic. We already talked about they trade. Um, yeah, we talked about the Mavericks trade. They ain't really doing anything in the offseason. The Nets signed Justice Winslow, Kendrick Nunn. Resigned Kyrie to a five-year 253. So this is Kyrie without the shenanigans. Kyrie without the shenanigans is worth the uh, mass contract. Uh, other than that, I guess a little bit debatable with five years this much money. But we don't got to worry about Kyrie. No off-court problems. So we good. So Nerlens Noel. The Nuggets, uh, they missed some representation. So I kind of like this signing. Bruce Brown also re-signed for them. Um, PJ Washington re-signed for the Pacers. They didn't really do anything else other than that. Nas re-signed with the Pelicans. I like that pickup a lot. And then they also re-signed Yaka Pirtle too. So the Pelicans, I'm not gonna lie. I think it might be the year next year to make it to the finals. That's if B.I. and Zion stays healthy. That might be my early pick. And then Miles Bridges makes his NBA return. And signs with the Detroit Pistons. So he's going back home to. Is he from? Actually, I think he's from like Flint, Michigan. So he's going home to Michigan. And then Grant Williams. A big contract offer from the Detroit Pistons that they couldn't resist. And the Celtics didn't match. And then they also signed Seth Curry too. So to get them some shooting on the roster. So, all in all, I kind of like the Pistons moves in the offseason. Other than Bob's Bridges, bitch ass. <clears throat> this is probably the biggest move in the offseason. Pascal Siakam and a first-round swap for Carl Anthony Towns and a first round, and then the other swap. This kind of helps both teams. I think it's kind of like a win-win because they've been looking to... The Raptors started looking to trade Pascal to blow it up and start the rebuild. And they've been they've been lacking a five. They've been lacking a five. Pascal been playing a five for the team. So why not get one of the best shooting fives to help the spacing out? And then Scotty Barnes is your four. You still got OG. I think Gary Trent is probably on this roster. And now you add Scoop. So the Raptors, like, they just played things perfect. And now they're probably looking like a playoff team next year. Messiah Jerry does it again. Does it again. And then what are the moves? I know they did something. What the hell am I doing? All right, so the other moves, Karis Lavert ends up um, signing with the Toronto Raptors. Dono Ben resigns. We got to get Christian Coloco back on this team. 2K just be releasing people sometimes, so I got to do some of that after this. And Lonzo on the Rockets. This happened last year in the Golden Mind VA series. Lonzo ended up on the Rockets. I think it might have been KPJ ended up on the Bulls. I ain't do a three-team trade. 
But Lonzo on the Rockets, I think this could really help out this team a lot. They need a point guard and someone to move the ball. KPJ, like he's a he's not a terrible playmaker. I just don't think he's a point guard. Lonzo helps a lot. And it's not like Lonzo's like so ball dominant. He's gonna get the ball movement. And you still got Sangoon. I think this is gonna help the Bulls. I not help the Bulls. Help the Rockets a lot. And it might help Jalen Green in the backcourt. San Antonio Spurs, they landed Vic. So they traded Jacoperto for Valanchunas. But after they got, uh, ah, man, what's his name? After they got one Benyama, there was no reason to have Valanchunas. Because I was thinking about playing uh, Victor at the four. But you have Jeremy Sunhan, who you just drafted. So you want both of them together. And they are they both from France? Jeremy Sunhan from France, right? Yeah, I think I'm not bugging. Jeremy Sunhan got to be from France. So you got them at the four and five spot together. And then they also picked up Evan Fournier, too. So another France guy. And then you got Isaiah Harnstein. The Spurs just got all hella international players. And they signed D'Angelo Russell. And they also re-signed Trey Jones. So, this is kind of a now interesting team. Because last year, they didn't have really nobody. Kelton Johnson has a go-to guy. Like, come on now. Let's be serious. Let's be serious. They got one Benyama. They signed D'Angelo Russell. And they got a lot of young talent. And Pop is still here. So, Spurs is going to be an interesting team next year. And then the Suns, we already talked about what they did. They also signed Wananabe, Javante Green, and Austin Rivers. OKC, they signed Kelly Oubre, re-signed Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Other than that, they ain't really doing anything. Minnesota, did they get? Oh, Andre Drummond goes to Minnesota. Damian Lee, Ish Smith, Mike Conley signs with the Timberwolves. So that's big. They lost uh, Dan Russell. So having a vet like Mike Conley, you already got some little chemistry with Gobert. So we'll see how that plays out for them. They missed the playoffs last year. And another team that missed the playoffs is Trailblazers. They signed Marquise Morris, Dwight Powell, and Dante DiVincenzo. And somehow, somewhat. James Wiseman is still on the Golden State Warriors after selling in Game 7. But nobody really wants him. His value is tanked. And then Wiggins and Jordan Poole got their contracts. They signed Dennis Smith Jr. And then the Washington Wizards in the offseason. Not really doing anything. Re-signing Will Barton and signing Malachi Flynn. And that is the free agency in the NBA draft. Moving on to the Summer League and the championship game, the Chicago Bulls ended up winning the Summer League. And was Nick Smith playing? I don't know. This might have been before the trade. So, Samanovic. I swear this brother been in Summer League forever. He had 24. AO has 17. That's kind of disrespectful for him to be playing in Summer League still in this. Um, Kennedy Chandler. Trenton Wofford, 17 and 8. Then on the other side, Jordan Hawkins ended up going last last pick in the first round, had 22. Ty Ty with 20. Jalen Green with 20. No business for him to be playing. They also had Sharif Cooper. It's dead at AAU team right here. But they ended up losing in the Summer League. All star game next year is going to be in Memphis. In the next video, it's about that time. You know what we had to load up. It's about that time. Yes, sir. It's time to be golden, man. Is y'all ready? Is y'all ready? Next episode is going to be the start of a new era. Just the beginning. The golden era. It's just begun. And the next episode, the golden hoop summit featuring Reggie Mack, Carlton Davis, Jeremy Goods, Mo Davis, hella stars. And to find this draft class, what y'all got to do is, you know, load that thing up. Go over here, go to users. And I should be like in like the top 15 or so downloads. Yeah, here we go. Go to fictional draft class. Well, go to fictional draft. Gamer tag Reg Dollar to find the rest of my draft classes. Four of them things. 
and I gotta show you guys a little workaround what you guys gotta do, cause 2K, I don't, they never patched a glitch of like the importing, what was it called? The draft class storylines. Yeah, so they didn't fix that glitch of like the draft class storylines where it just like randomizes like this the attributes and tendencies. And I ain't put all this damn work in to put do put all these damn attributes and tendencies for y'all not to use. So what y'all gotta do is after you import the draft classes, well, save the draft classes like when you guys are not in here. So after you save the draft classes, what you gotta do for the workaround is to get everything. You gotta export the every every player's DNA or as many as you want if you don't want to do all 75, but export the player's DNA. And then after you do that, load up the draft class in my NBA. And then like once the season starts, you gotta go to each and every individual player as much as you want, and then import the DNAs back in. So you're gonna have the attributes and tendencies that I made. Cause it was there for a reason, especially with this draft class. Cause if you guys are new to my channel or something or haven't watched my previous videos, probably like a couple months ago, we did a college hoops 2K8 series of this of these players in college. And this brother Rich Mac was a monster. So check out them previous videos, you know, to get more in tune with them players. But that is the workaround to get the best experience of the golden professional draft classes. But it's your boy Reg Dollar, and this is episode one. Just the beginning. Just the beginning. It's a long time coming. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. It's about that time. Be safe. Stay goaded. And I'll see you on the next one.